As far as our performance against Man City goes, there's not many positives to get out of that performance in an attacking sense. Man City nullified our threat, Martin Atkinson was giving nothing, Otamendi and company were very close and very tight to Rashford who got no space to run in behind, Anthony Martial and Henrik Mkhitaryan were almost operating as win-backs in a back six, our counter-attacking threat was null and void. So we find ourselves talking about Marouane Fellaini and that red card. It really was an inexplicable 30 seconds from Fellaini. The first foul, the first yellow card, absolutely fine. He took Aguero down, tactical foul, regroup, reposition, get back into fence and kill the counter-attack. But then he followed it up seven seconds later by niggling at the back of Aguero's heels, who went down, they squared off, Fellaini leaned in, it's not a headbutt, but it is a headbutt in football. Leaned his head in, straight red, that's him missing for three games. And for the last 15 minutes, Man United had to play with 10 men. But coming out from that performance, there's a lot of criticism and a lot of finger pointing going towards Fellaini. Is he being a scapegoat for this game after the performance or is he an idiot and deserves the criticism? Let us not forget that Fellaini was given the captain's armband only a few weeks ago, much to the disdain of a lot of United fans. And in that team last night, only Antonio Valencia was older than him. Fellaini was one of the senior players, the players that should have been holding his head together in a heated match. A derby is always going to be fiery, it's always going to be hostile, but Fellaini lost his head completely and there's absolutely no excuse for that. There is absolutely no excuse in it, no defending what Fellaini did there. And for the last 10 minutes, Man United had to play with four at the back and five just in front with no attacker because we had to sit deep. So even though we had no attacking threat for that last 10 minutes, City were pressuring us and we were lucky not to concede a, a winner. And this particular point is not a scapegoat of Fellaini because you look at Ander Herrera and Michael Carrick, both superb defensively and I thought Fellaini was good defensively as well, up until that point of course. But Ander Herrera and Carrick didn't offer enough going forward and we missed Paul Pogba. We needed one of our three midfielders to replace Paul Pogba's passes, the player that bridges the defence to the attack. Fellaini failed to do so and he was the most attacking of the three midfielders. If you look at his positional map, Fellaini played most forwards and so often he was almost operating in a number 10 role he was that far forward. But he failed on at least two or three occasions when Rashford was on the shoulder of Otamendi, waiting for the ball in behind. Fellaini then decided to pass it wide to Martial or sideways to Herrera. And it's not in his locker. You can't expect him to do something he's not there or doesn't know how to do, but with Pogba out of the team, Herrera, Fellaini, or Carrick had to step up. And as Fellaini was the most advanced of those three midfielders, it fell on Fellaini's shoulders and he just didn't do it. Fellaini has been defended on so many occasions by Jose Mourinho after he gave away that penalty at Goodison Park. So many United fans lambasted him, deservedly so, for what was an inexplicable decision. It's basically more Sunday League intelligence than Premier League from Fellaini. And again, he showed that at the Etihad last night. There is absolutely no defending him. And while some may say it's a scapegoat of Fellaini, I think he absolutely deserves the criticism he is getting for what was a shocking decision. And he's absolutely lucky that he didn't cost us that draw. Losing your head in a derby like that, it takes a long time to recover that with the fans. You know, Chris Smalling, look at him. He got sent off a couple of years ago. It took him until last season to really work his way back into the books. He's now back in the bad books after a dodgy season. But Fellaini... The player who so many people see as a relic of the David Moyes era, as a midfielder who is so limited and can be replaced by somebody better, goes and does that in the derby, it's going to be extremely hard for him to recover from that. But some may argue that Ander Herrera getting sent off against Chelsea was equally as foolish. And I think it was. You know, just after Michael Oliver had warned Chris Smalling and Ander Herrera say, look, stop the fouls. Herrera fouled Hazard a couple of seconds later, gets a second yellow card, Man United play an hour with 10 men. The difference being that Ander Herrera is actually a fucking good footballer and he can get away with these snide tackles, gets a red card because he commits himself. He's a fucking good footballer. And the problem here is that Fellaini is severely limited and a very average footballer. He's good at what he does in certain points. Starting in the field, he's awful. Prior to this City game, Fellaini had so many sceptics at Manchester United in terms of the fans. So many want to see him sold in the summer. And after that performance against City, there's going to be even more voices towards that. Because you just saw how limited Fellaini was as a footballer. Yes, he's good at what he does in certain jobs. But imagine we had someone like Bakayoko there, 
against Man City instead. Somebody who can defend equally as good as Fellaini, but actually has the ability to bring the ball out of defence. That's where Fellaini lacks. That is why he should never start in midfield. And that is why, for me, the criticism is absolutely deserved. But I want to know what you think about Fellaini after that performance last night, or as a whole, should Fellaini stay or go this summer? Should he be sold, or should Mourinho keep him for another year because he's good at his job in certain points and maybe he can be an asset next season? Let me know in the comments below. I want to know what you think. Is he being scapegoated after that, or is his criticism absolutely deserved? Let me know in the comments, as always. Please drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV. We'll see you soon. Take it easy.